There is a general consensus among geologists that the Earth is at least four and a half billion years old. Fragments of this inconceivably distant past dominate the surface of Big Ben Ranch State Park. It's a place shaped and scarred by eons of geologic havoc. Shifting continents, volcanoes, faulting and erosion have all at one time or another played a role in the formation of this landscape. These rocks form part of a giant puzzle that contains the history of our planet. Only the puzzle has a lot of missing pieces. It's the job of the geologist to put this fractured puzzle together. Dr. Kevin Urbanzik of Sol Ross State University has been working in and around Big Ben Ranch State Park since 1984. Man, this water is just glassy, smooth. For the last few years, Kevin has been taking his students on field trips into this desert region. The Rio Grande, skirting the southern boundary of the park, has provided them with a prime setting for a floating laboratory. The dip out here is the rocks are not flat, they're tilted to the west a little bit. So if you take a series of layers and tilt them to the west and then cut through them with a river like this, the river's cut down through these things, then we're floating into older and older rocks. Because remember, the older ones are always at the bottom. And you tilt it and then cut it through horizontally. As we float, we started in rocks that were about 28 million years old. We floated into stuff that might be about 29 by now. The professor can put everything into perspective and, and uh, hit on things that uh, were hit on in class. And you can actually relate what's in the classroom to what's actually out, out in the field. You can textbook yourself all, all over the place, but you gotta go out and look at it and actually see it. And Kevin, he knows the area real well, so he, he comes down and tells us everything we need to know. And I'm finally learning all the formation names. So yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we, we do probably 10 trips a year with the geology department at Sol Ross. And so it's been really successful. We've, we've introduced this, this canyon in particular uh, to a lot of students, introductory geology students at Sol Ross, who never would have done this, never would have floated through this, these canyons. Another individual who has spent years studying the region's ancient past is Ken Barnes. As a surveyor based out of Terlingua, Ken got to know the landscape foot by foot. His practical knowledge of the area, combined with an interest in prehistoric life forms, have led him on a search, a search for the remains of creatures that populated this area millions of years ago. Uh, what we have here is a mosasaur. He's uh, a marine lizard. He's kin to the branded lizards that still live today, but uh, he also went extinct about the same time as dinosaurs did. He was a ferocious creature. He had about 70 teeth in his head. Uh, he'd eat anything he could get his mouth on. These guys lived about, this one here, probably about 80 to 85 million years ago. At that particular period of time, all of this was under a, what they call the Inland Seaway, which actually went from here, from the Gulf of Mexico, clear up to Alaska. These mosasaurs that I'm finding over here in this area outside the park, uh, this on private land, it's a very good chance that they can be found over in, in some parts of uh, the Big Bend uh, State Park. This is one area on the Big Bend Ranch likely to contain mosasaur remains. What we have here is the beauty formation. This is the white stuff. The white rock here. Sitting right on top of it is this thin bedded limestone, which is the Bochias formation. And this is the very bottom of the Bochias. This is the contact with the Buda. Most of the stars haven't been found this far down in the formation, but they're, they have been found up higher up. Well, this, in the Bochias. In the Bochias, right. right but there is a chance of it up there, but there's fish, all sorts of 
marine clams and oysters and stuff like that can be found all through this. Sharks, they were here. No telling what kind of creatures we might find that we don't know about. <laughs> this chunk of Bokia outcrop is located on the edge of the most significant geologic feature on the park. It's called the Solitarium. Nearly nine miles in diameter, the Solitario was formed during Cenozoic times, 35 million years ago. This ring of limestone is the result of a massive lacolith, or earth blister, that pushed and cracked its way up towards the surface. Evidence of this event is highly visible in a section known as the Lower Shutout. This intrusion, this, this lacolith, bulged or domed up all of this stratigraphy that was here. The top of our blister has been eroded away completely, and all we see is the rim. And the south rim is what, what we can see here behind us. And then erosion forming a channel through here has formed what we call the shut-up, the lower shut-up. And this erosion has exposed a, a very nice section of limestone here behind me. Some of the oldest rocks in the park are found within the Solitario. This is called Tesnus Shale. The Tesnus is interpreted as being Carboniferous in age, uh, Carboniferous being one of the, the periods of the Paleozoic, about 300, 320 million years old or so. Once an ancient sea bottom, this section of deep ocean sediment was caught between two colliding tectonic plates approximately 280 million years ago. When the plates came together, the sediment was squashed, tilted, and thrust onto the American continents. This section of the Tesnus has since been exposed by erosion. Okay, well, this is pieces of this Tesnus shale, and it represents basically just lithified mud, but it's a sedimentary deposit that's 300 million years old. Between 25 and 42 million years ago, at least seven volcanoes were active in the Big Bend region. This is Wiley Mesa, a spot where the ash, lava, and mud flows from five of those volcanoes came together. The actual cones of the volcanoes have long since eroded away, leaving behind only scattered clues of their existence. It's wonderful that the state has, does own this property because it provides scientists access to this natural laboratory. In West Texas in general, our access to private property has become restricted. And so we have Big Bend National Park and Big Bend Ranch really to work with. As the pieces of this fractured global puzzle come together, the window to our Earth's history becomes clearer. Geologists looking through that window at Big Bend Ranch State Park become witnesses to events that have occurred over billions of years. Meanwhile, this landscape of rock and canyon waits patiently for the next big shakeup of the primeval puzzle.